this course we'll be starting with learning CSS basics. So the first lecture that we'll be covering today here we'll be talking about inline styling. So we have one HTML page over here as you can see and it's pretty basic stuff. What we are going to do is learn about inline styling. So every element that we have in an HTML page has style attribute to it. For instance, if I go over here in my header tag, and as you can see, I'm including a couple of stuff over here like image and then this div and then this nav bar. So if I have to give some styling to my header, what I'll do is I'll make use of style attribute. And this is style attribute basically comprises of key value pairs. So key here would be the attribute which you want to apply. For instance, if you want to change the background color of this, you will write it in this way, background color, then the value will be provided after separating it by colon. So I'm saying background color, and then the color that I would like to see over here. If I just scroll down, you will see the hexadecimal code coming up. And let's go and choose some background color over here, like corn silk. So I'll just select that. And here, the color is coming up. You can obviously go ahead and write hexadecimal code as well over here. Now, in order to specify more than one key value pair, you need to separate it using a semicolon. So here, I'm just going to run this. And similarly, you can make use of this style attribute on any other HTML element that we have in our page. And accordingly, specify various styling options. For instance, you can specify border color, width, and many other HTML CSS attributes along with their values. So let's go ahead and save this and run it in the browser. So here, this is how it was looking earlier without the CSS being implemented at all or the inline styling being implemented at all. Now, if I just go ahead and refresh this page, you'll now notice that the background for the header is coming up. And compared to the earlier version, this one is looking a bit nice. Now, the drawback with this approach is that you'll have to go and write styling attribute for all the HTML elements that you have. And that is going to mix, you know, the functional logic as well as the design aspect of it in this whole page. Now, to avoid all these scenarios and have a clear separation of concerns, we'll be creating a CSS file in the next lecture to see how this can be taken out from here and implemented in a separate file and then we'll make use of that file over here in this HTML page and get the same result.